Hey guys, it's Dawn here. Um, today let's talk about saddles. Uh, I get this question every once in a while about what's the right saddle to get. And <clears throat> I'm going to do a very general thing. Um, and then I'll kind of tie it into endurance. Only because endurance is when you really know if your saddle is going to work or not. Um, anything can work for five for a five mile ride but then the problems will occur the longer and longer and longer you ride so obviously endurance is where you ride for a long time so um so that becomes the bigger test right um uh, sometimes the saddle will work great for you at 25 miles but then at 50 miles then um, you start seeing issues and you got to make adjustments um so when people ask what saddle should i get or whatever i think that they're that they're asking um uh, i don't know i can't answer that question at all like i've been trying to figure out ways and there's just too many factors because <laughs> what i'm um, sorry lacer is Oh, let's see. He's over there trying to get my attention. Um, uh, so the right saddle, what's the right saddle to get? The only answer is the one that fits you and your horse. Um, but we can look at all the different factors that goes into picking the perfect saddle. And if you review all these factors... Um, these are the factors that I took into consideration to choose my saddle. Um, and then, you know, I'm thinking maybe if I just give you all this data and, and info, then it'll help you choose your saddle, right? Uh, by the way, my saddle, um, even though I went through the whole process to pick the right saddle for me, it won't, it's not going to work for everybody um, because they will have different factors. So anyways, disclaimers over. All right. So um, the, what I have is I have a 11, um, a, almost 12-year-old Wintech Isabel dressage saddle. This is the saddle that I have been riding Lasser in. This is the only saddle I've ridden Lasser in for the past almost 12 years. All right. What I love about this saddle is um, the important thing to me is a deep seat. You see this nice deep seat? And then it has, um, a, what's it called? It has a narrow, oh, I can't remember what it's called. Oops, sorry. It has a narrow, oh, I can't think of the word thing over here. That means that it's not super wide, so my legs don't have to spread out and my pelvis doesn't have to spread out. This is nice and narrow, and so it allows my legs to stay um, more narrow together. My crotch area, sorry, okay, I'm not going to show you my crotch, but... Um, and then the other thing that I like, the nice long panels, it's close contact. It's a very lightweight, um, kind of a minimal saddle, and and you got the nice long leg because basically I wanted close contact right I wanted lightweight I wanted uh, minimal and then uh, the long flaps also let your legs get closer to the horse and the way that I ride um, a lot of times in some pictures it almost looks like I'm just standing you know my legs aren't I have a very very long leg and I let that drop and hang and that helps with stress on my knee and my ankles which are bad and all that stuff um, the other big 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 must for me is the stirrups the stirrups on this the stirrup bar on this is actually set back further it's set right there it's actually set back further than on most saddles um that is to encourage for your your stirrup to actually drop down and sit lower than most i mean by lower i mean further back 
So my stirrup is sitting further back than most because I don't I don't want to be anywhere near a chair seat. Chair seat is like the opposite of what I want. Um, I want everything to be in alignment and, and balance for me. And then I can always go up into two point. Uh, and it's really easy to go into two point because this is very minimal and out of the way. <clears throat> I have two choices of where I put my stirrups. I, I do it under my flap. So a lot of people notice that I don't have my stirrup leather sitting out here. And I don't do that because then it'll rub me. And I don't like that. This is a nice cleaner look and nothing is rubbing up against my leg because I tucked it under there. And this one is really easy to change that option because you can see I have access to this stirrup bar right there. So if I wanted it on top, I just put it on top. If I want it on the bottom, then I just attach it on there. And that's what this this access um, hole is for, all right? Um, <clears throat> the other big thing are the long, the longer straps here for the girth. That means that I use the shorter dressage girths and that means that the buckle, my buckle is down here um, more by my foot and not up in here under the saddle where it can the horse can feel it or my leg can feel it and all of that so that's a, another comfort thing um i use the i use the wintech uh what's this called um oh, i know these things darn it uh webers i use the wintech webers which is a special strap that is only one strap thick. One, once you get, once you get it done up, then it's only one strap thick. And then I use the MDC bars, and this is one that you can actually turn. Did you see this? Flap, get out of my way. Um, see how you can actually turn this, so you can have it sitting like this which is traditional you can turn it 45 degrees or 90 degrees and what 90 degrees does is when the stirrup is just sitting its natural state is to be perpendicular to the horse um normal normal stirrups are like this right normal stirrups are like this so the natural way that it lays is to be parallel with your horse well when you put your foot in i can't turn my arm that way when you put your foot in and then you need to turn the stirrup just that turn can put a lot of tweak and twist into your knee and you won't feel it for the first 20 miles or whatever but when it starts getting to 50 miles or something you will feel that your knee your knee feels that twist especially if you have a thicker stirrup leather that's doubled up and it's all you're always fighting that twist right versus if you had one that naturally that naturally wanted to sit perpendicular and in that position and not fighting you. And you can, you see how one click changes how this will lay. So, um, so yeah, Th those are all big things for me. Sorry, I'm supposed to be talking about the saddle. Um, okay, so a lot of people think that you gotta stick with an endurance saddle, right? In endurance, everyone is riding in everything, okay? You got all the different saddles being used and even bareback, uh, bareback pad or completely bareback with not, nothing on the horse, naked, okay? You can do that. That's fine in endurance because, you know, it's, it's all about whatever works. So literally, you don't have to worry about getting the right saddle. It's just about whatever works for you. Can't even stress that enough. There are people using Western, and the to me, the only reason to have a Western saddle with the horn, the whole point of the horn is for roping and for rope and stuff like that, right? But a lot of people, uh, instead of using it for that, they think that it's a handle. It 
it's there so use it however way you want but i don't ever grab so i don't need a horn so obviously that's out for me um uh, all my biggest things is the stirrup it needs to be back in the position that i want it to be it has a deep seat oh and this um what is this i can't i can't even think this is thigh thigh blocks i think i think that this is called some some saddles has have a block back here and a block in the front i just want this block because i go into two point and the and this really helps um me not fatigue when i'm in two point because i can kind of rest up against it and it also prevents me from going up and over i have something to rest and lean on if i need to or catch me if i need to or whatever so this this is a this is a big must for me so a lot of people are thinking okay well obviously if you do an endurance you got to get an endurance saddle and that's not necessarily true um the one of the biggest things that the endurance saddle has over everything else is that it's a really light set it's going to be light um because that's going to help the less weight the horse is having to carry the better right um and also that it has all of these attachment points on the back of the saddle so you can hook up bags but it is very very easy to take your saddle to any um saddle uh repair saddle expert person and they can they can add on they can add on these hooky things straight onto your saddle and if they can't you can the other option is you can actually buy these little loops that can hook onto any of your straps and then it'll just lead up to there with a d-ring on the end and then you can strap onto that um so you have options i have a dressar saddle but i took it to a saddle maker and he added all of the little hooky thingies on the back um i tried endurance saddles and I didn't like them it didn't fit the way that I rode and it didn't have the features that I wanted um, so that was already a, a, a X for me um, this saddle this saddle happens to have the interchangeable gullet system and that was a big must for me because when I bought Lacerre, he was three years old and he was changing so much. I mean, he was growing, he was widening. And then, then when we added exercise to it, then he was bulking up and then sometimes he'd slim down because he went up and all that stuff, right? So all of the changes, I needed to have an interchangeable gullet system. And um, now they have saddles uh, that have adjustable gullets and it's something like you twist uh, you use a hex ring or whatever, however they designed it, but you twist um, something over here and that will change the gullet shape. Um, so th those are great. Uh, something like that is a must have. This one happens to have the care system, C-A-I-R, which is an air bladder system on the back on the bottom instead of a wool flocked and that is a huge debate and controversial topic um air is fine and has been perfect for me i've never had an issue with it but i'm also light if air the the whole point of that is wool flocked is a lot of maintenance because if it gets too dense or or if it gets bumpy and um can't think of words right now um, if it gets uneven or whatever then that is a problem so the air bladder fixes that because air won't ever get bumpy and it's always going to even out and it's and it's always going to re um it's always going to if it gets compressed it's always going to go back to its natural state air won't stay compressed versus wool if you compress it long enough it will stay compressed and then if it becomes rock hard compressed and all uneven then it's really bad and uncomfortable for your horse and then you got to get it redone now the problem with the air is some people were reporting issues that the air bladder popped or it leaks or whatever those type problems i've never had those problems but that's going to lead me to another thing <clears throat> i at my heaviest actually okay i'm gonna have to give you a whole history um 
I was 150 pounds at a time. Um, the heaviest I was riding Lacerre was when I was pregnant and I was 186 pounds. And I could tell, I could tell that that weight difference made a difference. Um, it didn't hurt him still, but it did make a difference. Plus when I was pregnant, my balance and all that uh -huh, wasn't as great. So that, so that, that all played a factor. Um, and then now for the last, uh, five, four or five years, I don't know, some, maybe three, four years, something like that. In the last several years, I've been consistent at 124 pounds. And so I'm kind of athletic, um, have a smaller frame and build and I'm lighter on the 124 pound range. So my weight is not going to automatically compress those air bladders and put a lot of strain on them. And then even when Lacerre is being crazy and bouncing around stuff between him and I, basically I will just bounce off of the saddle rather than sitting deep and compressing it and making that really hard on him. So that is going to play a factor in, in the fact that I've never had a problem with it. Right. Um, so your, your weight, bottom line, your weight and the way you ride, if you're always sitting deep in your seat, that is going to be different than someone like me that is always in two point. I'm always thinking, get off of his back. Let him have his full use of his back and the full use of his shoulders, which is why a dressage saddle is so great. Dressage saddles are actually designed to get off of their scapula and their withers and shoulder and let them have full movement. And then another thing with that is I have my saddle sitting a little bit further back than some people do. And that's once again, if you've seen pictures of Lacerre's shoulders, he has huge shoulders and huge movement. And in order to use that comfortably and properly, my saddle has to get out of its way and my body has to get out of his way. So basically, I just need something that's going to just stay out of his way so he can do his job. Which also leads to girth tightness. I have my girth on looser than most people out there. I remember when I was getting trained on how to tighten a girth and it was basically do it up as, as tight as you possibly can, walk the horse around to where they, they've ex expelled air and then cinch it up again even tighter, right? Get, I mean, you want that as tight as possible, period. That's not how I do things now. Um, I have it as loose as possible without shifting and coming off. And part of what is going to allow me to have my, my girth looser is my, how, well, how well balanced I am. And also because Lacerre has a really prominent withers. And so his, his uh, back, his top line is V-shaped which is going to hold this, uh, naturally hold the saddle more securely than a round barrel horse. And I ride a round barrel horse, so I know, I know the challenges of that. You kind of have to make it on, put that on tighter or else you just kind of, it's just a barrel. Things will just roll right off the side, you know? But the, my, uh, um, my key is, or what I try, what I aim to do is to have it as the loosest possible without shifting and still doing its job. And then part of that to assist is, um, he does wear his, um, <laughs> he does wear his breast, his breast collar on top, uh, on top of all that. So then that does help, um, you know, making sure that the saddle stays in place. The, the, his shoulders is constantly going to push the saddle backwards. And then, um, the breast collar is just to catch that and make sure that it doesn't just go flying off of him. Um, and then, uh, whenever we go downhill, then the, the saddle shifts forward again. But I know that once it's okay, then, uh, whatever. Okay. So, uh, Anyways, back on topic. What was I doing? Oh my, you see how I just jumped topic to cut, but I'm following, I'm following a logic line. All right. So your riding position, um, is going to affect things. Your weight distribution is going to affect things. If you are misaligned, 
you need to go to a chiropractor or you need to fix it or you need muscle work or whatever you need exercises to rebalance yourself okay you have to be a balanced rider um, to be a good rider and that's to help you and the horse and all that and then you don't have to worry about a whole bunch of other stuff because uh, the, the proper balance weight distribution is going to help okay um, the horse the horses shape of his back withers and shoulders how long is his back is he short backed and all that all that plays a factor obviously how the horse moves normally some you know the gated horses move differently than lasser who is you know so how the horse moves um what type of terrain uh, you know up you know steep uphills and downhills versus flat <clears throat> all of that all of that changes things and then your saddle pad um changes things uh all right i think i actually okay so a lot of people they kind of like whenever i say try a dressar saddle because everything that they describe to me fits a dressar saddle they want a deep secure seat um they want long legs they want close contact so i say you know well look into a dressage saddle that's what i use what what's wrong with the dressage saddle and in their mind they're thinking oh the you know ding 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 ding, ding you know in an arena and stuff like that no 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 dressage originated as the the discipline to train and ride war horses battle cavalry they are riding for miles to get to a battle ground um so they're out camping and all that and um i don't know if you call that camping but you know what i mean these are soldiers riding you know and they are jumping they are you know going long distances they are running they are charged they are fighting this is war that this is a war saddle you guys dressage is a discipline of war <laughs> of war horses of battle i'm like what so it's gonna be one of the best saddles ever to do anything in these these war horses were expected to do everything and if you look at the the old training on how they trained the old cavalry stuff where these horses are going down these cliffs basically and then jumping into water they expect and this was back before PETA right and back before people were like oh horses have feelings and you know you you can't and you got to put the horses horses safety first no this is way be before then so these oh my gosh that training is insane and they're doing all of it in a dressage saddle and and because it was the best so I think when you look at it that way everything is going for the dressar saddle um you want something that's balanced and even and all of that oh okay so one of the best ways to find out what saddle is going to work best for you and your horse is to go and get uh, a live pressure mapping all right so what this is, is they have a mat, like a saddle pad, that goes on the horse. And this is a pressure-sensitive mat. That pressure-sensitive mat is going to send pressure data. <coughs> oh, I need water. Wirelessly to like a cell phone, because then they have the app on your cell phone. And then they hook up the cell phone they hooked it up to mine as a clamp right up here and then right here so that i could see it i could see this data live as i rode because uh we did the saddle fitting thing while static meaning the horse is standing still and you measure the entire top line right but the problem with that is if i asked him to collect up while he is standing it changed the entire shape of his back and then uh, there are videos out there and i've taken videos showing how much the back and shoulder moves when it's going 
just at a walk. So then, then you imagine how much everything is moving while, while they're uh, at other gates, right? So you need the live pressure mapping. That is going to catch and then you can also experiment. Okay, what happens when I go into two point? What happens when I'm sitting deep? And then we're, let's try sitting deep and, um, and a sitting trot. A sit, sit a working trot, okay? Where, and then you'll see the, the boom, boom, and you'll see on, on the screen the pressure and how high that pressure gets. Um, because it's different colors for the different, um, how much pressure uh, it feels, right? So you do that, you go to a session and you do that with the live pressure mapping and you experiment at all the different gates, all the different riding positions, and then you can also see whether or not you are a balanced rider because it's gonna catch that. It's gonna catch if you're totally weighting your right side or the horse is doing something funny or, you know, and it's gonna find those hot spots that are so hard to find because it only happens at certain things. That is your answer, okay? Live pressure mapping. Hey, sorry guys, my video cut out <laughs> towards the end. So anyways, um, live pressure mapping, excellent stuff. Um, uh, Western saddles tend to be, their purpose tends to be more um, oriented about cow work. So they're going to, the great thing about them is that they have the largest um, surface area that's contacting the horse so it has the best weight distribution um, but the bad thing about them is that they're really heavy and clunky and that's not necessarily something that you want in endurance but they're also secure and they spread out the weight really well and stuff like that so everything is a give and take so you'll have to see if that works you know if it works it works right but um, just keeping in mind what what they were designed and meant to do. Um, my dressage saddle, the weakest point, uh, the, the biggest con for it is that it has a very small and narrow um, panel, it, very narrow panels on either side that's contacting the horse. So that's kind of a good and bad thing um, to me. I think the combination of me having a loose girth and allowing it to move instead of being just strapped down and immobile on the horse's back, I think that makes it work. And also my lighter weight and my riding style and the fact that I'm aware, so I change up my weight distribution all the time. Um, things like that, that I'm always aware of where my weight is and how long my weight has been in that position and then changing it up for the horse being mindful that um, of how that's affecting him and how that's going to feel for him and all of that right so i make it work for me but um in itself it does have a narrower contact it has narrower contact points on the horse and so not as good of a weight distributor as as a Western saddle. So that's when you go into the other saddles that have a combination of these things. And so my perfect saddle would be the one, my saddle, my dressage saddle with, um, with a bigger, a little bit bigger surface area, uh, to distribute the weight a little bit better. Okay. I think I think that's it. Otherwise, I I absolutely love my saddle and it has been working perfectly for us and our combination um, of all of the factors. Um, and that is proven because he never has, a, he, well, I can't say never, but he, he doesn't have any sore back issues or anything saddle, bad saddle fit related issues, right? Um, no white spots, no tender back, nothing like that. We've never, that has never been a thing that we've had to worry about. And it's because of all of the, all of the care that I put into, um, in choosing the right saddle and everything. So anyways, uh, hope that helps. I know, I'm sorry, I would love to be able to just give you a quick and easy answer, but it's the factors are too great. And that's why 
That's why finding the right and perfect saddle is so hard is because of all of these different factors. And you'll find people that love their saddle, but it's not going to work for you or, you know, whatever. And it's because you have to, you just have to sit down and consider all the factors and that, and that's how you'll be able to find your, your perfect one. All right. So there you go. And thanks for watching and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.